This tutorial explains how to jump higher. For kiters who can land small jumps, but have issues with boosting higher. Many kiters easily land their small jumps. But, as soon as they go a bit higher, they sink on landing. There is a good reason for this. After a large jump, you spend more time descending, of course. And during that longer descent, the kite will tend to creep upwind. It can even overfly onto your upwind side. Then, when you steer with the front hand for landing, the kite barely returns to the edge of the window. And at the edge of the window, the kite won't have enough lift to keep you on the surface. To land nicely, you need your kite to hit this sweet spot at the exact moment you touch down. The sweet spot is close to 12, but slightly deeper in the window, between low and medium power. This area gives the most lift and the most forgiving landings. As mentioned, the edge of the window doesn't provide enough force and your kite may even front stall out of the sky. Deep in the high power zone, you get plenty of force, but it's mainly sideways acceleration, not lift, due to the low angle of the kite. Down the sides of the window further from 12, you also get minimal lift due to the kite's low angle. Hitting the sweet spot on a small jump is pretty simple because the kite hasn't had time to creep upwind away from it. But as you jump higher, returning to the sweet spot is more tricky. Many people attempted to dive the kite earlier after sinking a few landings. However, steering early and gently creeps the kite lower down and further from the sweet spot. You generally get closer by steering late and hard, as this arcs the kite around in front of you. But the simplest way of hitting the middle of the sweet spot is to use a double movement on landing. Launch your jump, then keep the kite around 12. Keep the bar in to slow the kite from creeping upwind. Then, before landing, steer the kite firmly with the backhand. This positions the kite so you can dive it through the middle of the sweet spot with the front hand. The double movement is the best way for most kiters to land large jumps. If your timing is correct, you can land large jumps with minimal impact. You also have the option to weave across 12 a few times to stop the kite overflying. Then steer firmly towards the sweet spot on landing. Another method for hitting the sweet spot is the heli loop. The heli loop is a slightly more risky technique, but if perfectly timed, it can give very forgiving landings. The reason this kind of loop is so forgiving is because the kite has crept upwind during hang time. So it's possible to complete a loop high in the window. To heli loop, wait with the kite above your head. Then just before landing, Steer as hard as possible for a small loop. The direction you choose to loop is important. Looping away from 12 is less forgiving as the kite will fly lower. Looping towards 12 keeps the kite centered, closer to the sweet spot. When most people jump, the kite will tend to drift across 12 a little. In this scenario, looping with the front hand will give a softer landing. If your kite is very close to 12, you can steer with the back hand a few seconds before landing, then loop the sweet spot with your front hand. Or if you prefer, you can steer with the front hand a little and then loop with the back hand. Now let's look at how to launch a higher jump in the first place.
To jump higher, you must start to ride in faster. But at the same time, it's essential you keep a firm edge for as long as possible. A firm edge means the board is cutting into the water, producing lots of spray. If you lose that edge, even at the last fraction of a second, you will lose jump height. The challenge is that the faster you ride, the harder it is to keep your edge. Luckily, there are some tricks that will help you. As you build speed, start applying more weight to the back foot. Pressuring a smaller section of the board makes it easier to cut into the water. If you apply weight more evenly, you will probably lose your edge. It also helps to keep your legs bent and body crunch during the run-up so you can move your legs in and out with the surface. Your legs act like suspension, keeping contact with the water. Being compact also helps a lot at the moment of launch. As the kite is ripping you upwards, you are then able to extend your body and push down with your legs. This gives a final bit of edging that can work wonders for your jump height. Once you master holding an edge at increased speed, it's time to squeeze the maximum power out of your kite. You should already know that steering to 12 slowly gives less lift. And steering to 12 quickly gives more lift. To get a bit more power, you can begin with the kite lower. This gives more room to send the kite up through high power. Let's put this all together and run through the whole technique. This is all filmed in 18 to 22 knots, so we can focus on using technique rather than using overpowering wind. Start by lowering your kite slightly and speeding up. Lean back, bend your knees and contract your body. Pull in the bar as much as you can handle. Pressure the back of the board to keep it cutting into the water. Steer the kite up as quickly as possible. When the kite hits 12, pull in the bar and at the same time extend your body and stomp down hard. After takeoff, make sure the kite sits close to 12, keep the bar in to maximize lift and keep the bar straight to avoid accidental steering. To stop rotation, relax your legs and shoulders back and push the harness towards the kite. As you descend, keep your eye on the approaching water. About four meters before landing, steer the kite with the back hand. Then a meter or two before landing, dive the kite with the front hand across 12. You should feel extra lift and then start moving downwind quickly. Point the board downwind, touch down with the tail first and bend your knees to absorb the impact. Make sure to steer the kite back up before it dives too low. You can clear 10 meters even underpowered if you get all of this correct. But to jump really high, you need stronger wind. Strong wind will help you climb much quicker, but you will pay a heavy price for any mistakes. That's why I recommend you practice all of the skills in this video using very light wind. That's the best way to minimize your risks. The surface of the water is also important. It's hard to maintain a strong edge on choppy water. The board will keep losing contact. You need a smooth section to build your speed and edge pressure. For bonus height, look for flat water followed by a wave to act as a ramp. Using kickers does require perfect timing. You must build speed, send the kite up, then pull in the bar exactly as you hit the kicker. If you're starting to boost higher, it's critically important your gear is in pristine condition. Check carefully for any damage. 
Feel free to post your boosting questions in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and safe kiting to all of you.